This is Diana Mahoney with the Global Medical News Network reporting from the 25th Congress of Clinical Rheumatology in Destin, Florida. I'm speaking with Dr. David Eisenberg, who is the director of the Center for Rheumatology in the Department of Medicine at University College in London, England. Dr. Eisenberg spoke today about the British Society for Rheumatology Biologics Register, which is a large epidemiological study designed to monitor patients with rheumatoid arthritis who are receiving biologic drugs in the United Kingdom. Dr. Eisenberg, the Biologics Register has been recruiting patients for more than six years. What have we learned from it about the safety and efficacy of the tumor necrosis factor alpha blockers? Well, actually, it's been recruiting since 2001, so it's, uh, it's, it's over eight years, in fact. Uh, what we've learned, I suppose, is that each of the three main drugs that we're studying uh, are approximately equally effective. Uh, around 75% of patients uh, see a good response with the first tinnitus alpha blocking drug that we see. In terms of the side effects, uh, there have been one or two quite interesting, uh, but rather uncommon side effects observed recently, uh, but by and large, uh, the side effect profile is pretty much what we would have expected. Uh, with the encouraging news that the concerns about cancer there was a concern that there might be an increased risk of cancer, with the exception of skin problems, has not been seen uh, in, in our patients. Uh, in fact, the trend is, to, is towards protecting against getting cancer. Uh, the other particularly encouraging news is that if you respond to a tumor healthy blocking drug, we've shown that the, uh, the frequency with which myocardial infarction is occurring is falling. So the news has been very encouraging. Uh, there are some interesting issues around switching and to what extent you might expect to get a good response from a patient who's failed the first TNF-alpha blocking drug. Um, again, uh, some very interesting data is emerging from this study, but it would appear that something in the region of 50 to 60 percent of patients given the TNF-alpha blocking drug because the first one failed or caused side effects do seem to get benefits. So we're, again, we're, we're pretty encouraged by that. The register is, is slated to continue enrolling until 2013? That's correct. I believe. So what are some of the questions that um, investigators hope to, to look at it through this time? Well, the, 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 the register was, was predicated on the, on the cancer risk. We estimated, um, based on statistical advice received, that we'd need to study 4,000 patients uh, compared to 4,000 controls. And the comparative controls are very important for us because they give us patients uh, in a control group who have rheumatoid arthritis and who are active, not perhaps quite as active as those requiring the TNF alpha blockers, but nevertheless a very good comparative group. So we do not rely on historical controls, in other words. Uh, we are looking, obviously, at cancer risk, we're looking at effectiveness, we're looking at other side effects. Uh, one particular one that's been of some interest is that a small number of patients, a few dozen patients, uh, treated for their rheumatoid arthritis with a TNF alpha blocker had developed psoriasis, and this was not expected. We assume that this is on the basis of a change in the, in the uh, cytokine profile, but we can't be absolutely certain about that. But nevertheless, the truth is that nobody knows what is going to happen to patients given TNF alpha blocker drugs for a very long period of time, uh, because nobody on the planet has had uh, the TNF alpha block for more than, let's say, 10 years. So we now have plans to extend the follow up for individual patients. Uh, by linkage to the cancer registers in the UK, and also by continuing contact with the consultants who are the specialists who are looking after these patients for much longer periods of time. Thank you, Dr. Eisenberg. This is Diana Mahoney with the Global Medical News Network.